Hi, I'm Mike and today I'll be demonstrating a method for changing the shape of the Q109 envelope generator profile in response to how hard a key is struck on the keyboard. While there's more than one way to accomplish this with a modular synthesizer, I'll show you a method using modules that you're likely to already have in your system. There are many occasions when a velocity sensitive segment of an envelope generator is musically useful. A common requirement is to have a short attack time when playing staccato or fast, and a slower attack time when playing legato or more slowly. Since the Q109 envelope generator does not have any voltage controlled parameters, I will create a patch using several modules to accomplish this. First, let's look at the System 44 and I'll describe the modules I will use today. We start with the Q104 MIDI interface, right here. Now some viewers may have the newer Q174 of the MIDI interface, which will work perfectly also. The MIDI input is coming from a keyboard that has velocity sensitivity. Your keyboard must have velocity sensitivity in order for this patch to work. The gate output here will go to an envelope generator and act as a trigger. The pitch output here will go to a single Q106 oscillator to produce notes. The velocity output right here will be used to change the envelope generator profile. Today I will use a single Q106 oscillator that is going to generate a note every time we press a key on the keyboard. This oscillator range is set to 32 feet and will produce relatively low pitch. This oscillator is getting its control voltage into the 1 volt per octave input here from the Q104 pitch jack in the usual manner. We use the saw output to hear its frequency. The saw output is going to a low pass filter. Next to the Q106 we have the Q150 low pass filter. Any low pass filter can be used here to achieve the demonstrated effect. The Q106 signal is input here with a level set to 10. The cutoff frequency will be modulated by our envelope generator here. And I have set the cutoff frequency fairly low to make a more dramatic effect. Next we have two Q109 envelope generators side by side. We will achieve our velocity sensitivity by switching between these two Q109 outputs here and here. We will do this switching with a Q128 switch. The gate inputs here are connected to the Q104 MIDI interface through a Q124 multiple. I have the first Q109 set to a longer attack at about two and a half, and the second Q109 set to an attack of zero. All the other parameters for the Q109s are set the same as each other. To the right of the envelope generators we have the Q128 switch, which has two sections, the upper and lower section, which do the same function. We'll only be using the lower section today. The two envelope generators go into the A and inputs here and here. The output of the switch from the common port here goes back into the Q150 low pass filter. First let's play a few notes on the keyboard so we can hear the effect. I will switch manually between the two Q109s using the red button here as a demonstration. Later we'll do this switching with the keyboard velocity. So those first notes were played with the A on the whole time, which is the longer attack. Now I'll press the button manually and play the same notes again. So it's quite easy to hear the difference between the two envelope generator settings. However, what I really want is for the switching to happen based on how hard a key is pressed. Specifically, I want this sound when I play softer, and this sound when I play harder. I need to make a few comments about the Q128 switch as it has more capability than the datasheet shows. Specifically, it has a hidden feature that not only selects the A or B input based on the control port here, but can create an intermediate state that is the average of A and B, or mathematically A plus B divided by 2. 
Now, most people, including me, were unaware of this additional capability, and it becomes very important in this patch. For now, just remember that in order to select input B, we will need a voltage less than about 1.7 volts. To select the input A, we'll need a voltage greater than about 3.7 volts. A voltage between 1.7 and 3.7 volts will result in the average of A and B at the common port. As always, remember that these voltage values will vary from module to module and you should verify the exact values for yourself on your own system. Okay, back at the Q104 MIDI interface, we have the velocity jack here that outputs a continuous voltage between 0 and 5 volts based on how hard a key is struck. That voltage is held continuously even after you release the key until the next note is struck. Technically, a MIDI note velocity of 0 produces 0 volts, and a MIDI note velocity of 127 produces 5 volts. In reality, it's almost impossible to produce a 0 volt output while striking a note on the keyboard because it's almost impossible to hit a key that softly. If I feed this voltage directly into the Q128 switch control port, I will get an effect. However, as discussed, I will get three different results, A, B, or the average of A and B. I really only want A or B, so I will need to do a little more work. I need something that will produce one fixed voltage below a certain threshold and a different fixed voltage above that threshold. It turns out that I have a module that does this. Now let's change the setup and add a third Q109 envelope generator in the patch. I'll call this the Threshold Q109. In a previous video, I have described that a Q109 is triggered at the gate input here when the voltage is greater than about 1.5 volts in a positive going direction. I will patch the velocity output from the Q104 into the gate input of the Q109 here. When the velocity voltage is above 1.5 volts, the Q109 will trigger. So to create the two output voltages I need, I will set the sustain to 10, which will produce 5 volts when the Q109 is triggered. When the Q109 is not triggered, it will produce 0 volts. These are the two voltages that I need. Now I can patch the Q109 output here into the Q128 control here. Let's see how it works. I'll play a few notes and see what we get. Striking the keys softly results in the Q109 not triggering. Note that the LED is off if I can strike the keys softly enough. When I do this softly enough, not only is the LED off, but it also results in 0 volts to the Q128, which sets the B envelope generator. You can hear the short attack. Pressing the keys harder causes the Q109 to trigger and the output to go to 5 volts, which selects the A envelope generator. The LED on the Q109 and the Q128 confirm this. There is a problem though. I'm having trouble hitting the keys softly enough. Well, there's no problem that can't be solved with the addition of another module. You can adjust the sensitivity and switching velocity by adding a Q128 signal processor between the Q104 and the trigger Q109. I'll patch the velocity output of the Q104 here to the input of the Q125 signal processor here, and then the output of the signal processor back to the trigger Q109. I'll start by setting the Q125 to 100% and an offset of 0 volts. This will produce the same effect as before. Again, I'm having trouble hitting the keys softly enough to get that short attack time. 
So what I'll do is now I'll offset the Q125 in the negative direction so I can hit keys harder without triggering the Q109. So it seems to work. With a little experimentation, adjusting the offset on the Q125 and adjusting the signal processor gain on the Q125, you should be able to get a sensitivity that is very good for your particular playing style. Okay, for now that's it folks. Thanks for watching and please feel free to leave a comment or question and any suggestions you have on future tutorial videos.